we should now have an idea of um, why we're doing that and where RAMEX could be useful. I'm not trying to explain what or how we propose to do it. We call it RDFA Deployed Multimedia Metadata, for short RAMEX. So the ultimate goal is to actually enable existing multimedia metadata formats to successfully enter the semantic web in order to access it from the point of semantic web pages. And uh, we target itself descriptive metadata, so following your nose principle should be applicable. So that's the big picture of, of how we think it works. We have uh, any kind of multimedia metadata format, be it implicitly available as, as EXIF or MP7, so it does not have to be XML based. We have this stack where we build upon uh, URIs and RDFA, so heavily depends on RDFA. I'll come back in a minute to that. And RAMEX, which provides the vocabulary and operational semantics on how to actually access this. So, these are the three cornerstones actually. RDFA, which is uh, an RDF serialization syntax, uh, formalizations of multimedia vocabularies, and the actual RAMEX vocabulary itself. We're now going to look into detail. The very top, um, the RDF data model itself is an abstract specification of uh, how the RDF graph should look like and uh, just exists in some specification in our minds, but it doesn't use, it's not usable in any form. Uh, what an RDF API or RDF store does is putting that, implementing that model in memory so you could access it via an, an object oriented API. Uh, if you go further down to a concrete serialization to exchange it in order to save it or whatever, uh, you come into RDF model compliant uh, areas where you've got RDF XML, uh, very uh, complex and, and not, what, not widely used. And you've got other embedded things like RDFA where you need, need a host language like HTML or whatever to transport it. And then you've got non-compliant RDF model. Uh, things like microformats, uh, web APIs that need some lifting to get into semantic web. So we are talking about RDFA, so we've got a model compliant thing which is embedded in a host language. So what's about RDFA? That's basically a concrete syntax, so for serialization, for exchanging, using HTML or XHTML attributes. Uh, some of them you might know already, like href, rel, um, others are introduced with this specification. So, for example, instance of would tell uh, the type of a resource. Uh, property would uh, set uh, the property for a literal case, and so on. So that's pretty much what we learned from macroformats, how to embed metadata in HTML using attributes. And we're building on what we're trying to do is to embed an RDF graph remember back to the pyramid, into an HTML document. So the, the container, the host, would be the HTML document. So now, let's look at a complete example. We've got a HTML page from my homepage describing um, things that you know, uh, a human could read and these parts, or these bits, are actual RDFA. So you're using an attribute and this pretty much already looks like uh, RDF. But how do we get the RDF? First, just to give you an idea, a human user would see this in the red boxes, uh, you know, the places where, where the, the RDF is embedded. And the semantic web agent, on the other hand, if it applies the transformation, would get this RDF graph. So it would tell the it's about a person for a person uh, with the name, the nickname, and the workplace homepage. And there is a depiction as well, which could be rendered as an image on the HTML page. And that's probably a nicer uh, visualization, graph visualization of the same graph. So that what this is the basic input for a semantic web page. You could process this to uh, execute a Sparkle query on top of it. The second cornerstone 
of Ramex are multimedia vocabularies. We did some work in W3C Multimedia Semantics Incubator Group, resulting in a, a report. And in this report, I won't go into detail, uh, several uh, areas like still images, audio content, audiovisual content, and so on were described. So we gather, try to gather multimedia metadata formats for these areas and their respective formalizations. So for example, for EXIF, we found two formalizations. Um, that's the, the base, but you want to use it somehow. And that's where Remax comes into. We define a very lightweight ontology or vocabulary, as you like. Uh, just look at the three classes um, media asset, media asset description, formalization. So what we're saying here is a media asset, that might be a still image or a video, uh, has a certain description that's represented or stated as a media asset description. And it's saying it's using a certain formalization and it has got a native description. These two things uh, are obligatory, so we need them. Uh, the formalization itself is more or less a container for the schema URI, you need to say this is the actual mapping, this is the ontology, how to map, for example, MP7 to RDF. And what you also want to have, you need to have, is an to RDF, that's a service that actually can transform this according to a certain schema. And you need the, the native description, that could be an exit, that could be the, the image itself, or MP7 or whatever. The other things are nice to have, we could use it, but could live without it. I'm going to show you. So, that's an example of an um, image that we place on our server, and it has got embedded some exit metadata. We have this uh, RDFI server, formalization service, uh, that has, along with it, an ontology where the mapping is described. Now the question is how can we deploy this exit metadata with the content, with the image, uh, into an HTML document? Well, use Remix. We know these kind of using attributes from RDFA now, and what we basically have is the three classes I just introduced before. The media asset itself is talking about this JPEG. Um, it's saying here, it's got a description, this sample media assets description. And this media asset description has the native description that embedded in this case. In MPEG 7 that would be two different URIs. And it's stating it's using a formalization that has a schema URI to RDF, the formalization RDF uh, service. So that's how to publish it. Um, Shortly, we want to sum up what RDFA is not about, and then we're going to show a live example, hopefully it works. Um, so RDF, uh, RAMX is not about introducing another multimedia uh, vocabulary, like H-Audio, RDFA, or Music Ontology, whatever. It kind of uh, works together with these. Uh, it's not just a declarative vocabulary like an ontology, it also defines operational semantics, like what to do when the native description and the formal description is there. You could use the native description along with the schema to validate it. These are operational semantics, but you can't possibly uh, represent in an ontology. So that's where the operational semantics come in. And it's also not a replacement for existing technologies. It always needs a host like XHTML. We're focusing on XHTML now. Could be small SVG as well. That's where we really depend on RDFA. Uh, 